After watching the newly released Suicide Squad, I couldn't help but think of a similar August box office hit, The Guardians of the Galaxy. The style, ensemble cast, and introduction of many new faces in the comic book movie universe got me thinking. What else do these two films have in common? Well, I compiled a list of all the things that I could think of that range from completely cosmetic to similar beats within the plot itself. Also, this comparison only consists of the films and not the comics for which they are based, because my knowledge of such things is, well, minimal. On top of that, this is very spoiler heavy for both films, so keep that in mind. Here we go. Let's start with the teams in general. Both are comprised of criminals, thugs, and unhinged individuals who are tasked with taking on a threat that is, frankly, way out of each team's league. I mean, just look at Enchantress. She can teleport across the planet into a secure facility and whisk away with some important top secret documentation within seconds. I'd imagine a group of people with some guns and a baseball bat would have a tough time against her. The Guardians found themselves in a similar situation facing off against a disgruntled Kree who had an Infinity Stone, but more on that later. Both teams are led by somewhat hesitant leaders in the forms of Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, and Floyd Lawton, aka Deadshot, who both are into dual-wielding guns and wearing masks with red eyes. The strange thing is Star-Lord's mask is used as an oxygen-slash-filtration mask, while Deadshot's... Well, he said when he puts the mask on, people die, but what is he doing right here? People-slash-things are dying right here, and earlier in the film, he carries out an assassination mission without it on. I just... Ugh. Moving on, we come to our female protagonists, Gamora and Harley Quinn. Both are more hand-to-hand -hand focused in combat, but more importantly, each have ties to the secondary villains, Thanos and the Joker. Gamora is Thanos' adopted daughter in the comics. See, I actually know a little bit about the comics. And Harley is Joker's main squeeze slash get out of jail free card when fleeing from the Batman. Next up, we have Groot and El Diablo. Now, I know you can make a case that Groot is kind of like El Diablo plus Killer Croc put together, a powerful individual of very few words. But unlike Killer Croc, Groot and El Diablo both show up powers that were unknown to the other members of the group and inevitably sacrifice themselves for the sake of the team. Killer Croc is more like Drax in that they both seem to represent the muscle of the team and typically deliver their lines in a deadpan manner. And just because I feel like rounding out the team, I guess Rocket Raccoon is a little bit like Captain Boomerang in Love of Weapons alone. Oh, also, they both enjoy messing with other teammates, like the time Rocket got Star-Lord to steal a man's prosthetic leg, and the time that Captain Boomerang got Slipknot to kill himself. <laughs> good times, good, good times. Another interesting factor for both teams is that they both deal with a female supervisor to some extent that leads their own personal army. The Suicide Squad has Amanda Waller with Argus, and the Guardians have Nova Prime along with the Nova Corps. Although Waller's incentive plan consists of planting explosive charges in your neck, while well, Nova Prime is a little more polite. Picture how different Guardians would have been with Glenn Close's Nova Prime's finger on a kill switch. Now that would have been some interesting tension right there. As far as villains are concerned, both teams face off against some pretty rough odds that are bolstered by certain items. Entrantress's heart and the power stone wielded by Ronan the Accuser. Ironically, both teams attempt to basically just blow up their adversary with little to no avail. Finally, amongst many other small similarities between both movies, like A Prison Break, reading off rap sheets to quickly establish a character's backstory, and flying vehicles carrying the entire team falling from the sky, I wanted to mention the use of music in both films. They both seem very focused on this point, which is probably because familiar songs and tunes allow an audience to connect with brand new faces more easily. And I'll say that Guardians of the Galaxy did that much more naturally than Suicide Squad. An Eminem song? Really, DC? Come on! There are all the similarities between both movies that I could come up with. Have any I missed? Put them in the comments below so I can know them and you can prove how clever you are. Because, let's face it, you're pretty clever. Also, if you haven't yet, check out my review of The Suicide Squad and let me know what you think of the film, along with The Guardians of the Galaxy. If you have time, check out our weekly podcast, which will be dissecting The Suicide Squad in much more detail. Don't forget to like, slash subscribe, slash share with a friend if you want to as well. Thanks for stopping by and take it easy.